Thank you guys, and uh, it's enjoyable to be at the university with you. I remember sitting in chairs similar to you, um, and probably struggling with some of the same thoughts and ideas you have as, as you work on your education and plan towards your future. Um, how many of you, by raise of hand, know exactly what you're going to do when you graduate from college? <laughs> okay. N don't feel bad about that. That's how everyone starts. Uh, I wasn't any different. Uh, and so, you know, as I tell you about my education and career, and then we kind of walk through, what I really thought I would do is give you some points to think about as you approach life. Uh, and entrepreneurship is just one of those aspects, but how you pick your career, what you choose to do, what you're passionate about, what you're engaged in, how you chase your education, all those things will start to fall out of it. Um, again, there's a little bit of way discussion. Um, I went to BYU on a track and soccer scholarship, I joined the church, went on a mission. Uh, upon returning, went back to BYU for my MBA where I met my wife, Sabrina, uh, and we started a career. My first job while doing my MBA was working for Bain. You guys know what Bain is, consulting firm? Um, and then spent my right from there, Utah went to New York City uh, and managed brands for the Gatano Group, which was Gatano, Bonjour, Jordache, Sassoon, French Toast, Gloria Vanderbilt, Regatta Sport, a bunch of brand, denim brands. Um, business was about a billion in sales, and about uh, a year and a half later, it was three and a half billion. Uh, and the jeanswear market, and more importantly, the discount market of stores, Shopco, Costco, Target, Walmart, as you know, it had exploded. Um, I then left and went to a Outdoor company, my first foray in the outdoor, which was my passion, was Timberland. At the time, Timberland was about 80 million in sales, and it just made the transition from the Abington Boot Company of Hampton, New Hampshire, to the world Timberland. Uh, and it entered into work boots. And now was looking at the world of outdoor. Um, a few years later, the brand was 800 million and the dominant brand in the outdoor market. Uh, when outdoor became fashion. Um, a short stint back into New York, uh, Gloria Vanderbilt brand, which at the time was about three million in sales, targeted at department stores. So think Macy's, Dillard's, and doing poorly, losing three million a year on three million in sales. We re-engineered the brand, hired all new designers, changed the whole ad campaign, and went to a new category of distribution, which was called moderate stores. J.C. Penney's, Sears, Montgomery Ward's, and an upstart at the time called Kohl's. All right, you guys are all familiar with Kohl's now as a store? Well, I remember it was one store. Um, and th within a year, that brand went from three million to 97 million and sold. Um, left there and went to uh, Doc Martens. I remember with Air familiar with Airwear Doc Martens. Okay. So when I got to Doc Martens in 1994, it was 15 million in sales though producing about $30 million a, a year of product. So for those who have done any business classes, you can quickly understand that was an inventory problem. Um, and it was nine distributors selling the brand in, in North America alone, inclusive of Robert Greenberg. How many of you have heard of Skechers Shoes? Well, Skechers was, wasn't Skechers at the time. Skechers was a, a distributor of Doc Martens without the name Skechers. Um, and then a side little shoe brand called Primo Royale, where they were knocking off Doc Martens. Um, and we re-engineered Doc Martens globally, hired three young designers at the time, a guy named Kenny Cole, a guy named Stevie Madden, and a guy named John Fluvog, and redesigned the line. And four years later, Doc Martens was the largest in the global brown shoe business, doing about a billion a year in sales. Um, at that time, uh, CHB, closely held businesses of Bain, bought Spider. And so my favor came due, and I moved to Boulder, Colorado, and, and took over as running the Spider brand, which at the time was about six million in sales. Everybody only knew it by a downhill race suit with a web on it, right? Um, Tommy Moe and Peekaboo Street at the time. Uh, I think at the time, Spider, it said uh, it didn't even rank them in the top 25 in, in market share, and it ranked it as stale company, uh, mainly for men, and that was about the write-up in the industry. Um, seven and a half years later, 
Pfizer was number one in market share by about three times its next biggest competition, and we sold it to Apex, an investor from New York, for $136 million. Um, CHP wanted to stay on, and so I set up a new company called Brandbase, and we incubated brands, startups, and we focused on the snowboard market at the time with brands Section, Tech9, Nomus, and Grenade, at a time when Upstart little brands followed by big name pros became the trend. I then left there after about five and a half years. I uh, thought I was done and uh, my wife and I moved to California to do something different when I got a call from Martin Norton who owns Phoenix Outdoors. Phoenix Outdoors is a holding company. You may know it as Fjall Raven, the little leather Arctic Fox or the Konkin backpack. In 19, I mean, in 2011, Fjall Raven had a distributor in the United States uh, that did $600,000 with the brand and was losing money. The family decided to close down the distributorship unless I would run it. Uh, four years later, Fjall Raven, that little Konkin backpack and the brands has exploded. It's now one of the fastest growing brands in the North American market. Um, globally, we doubled the sales and added retail and um, I then left that to try and re-engineer Mountain Hardware, one of the Columbia brands, and soon after starting there was asked by the owner to leave and join Black Diamond um, in an effort to take Black Diamond to where it goes. And Black Diamond being a Salt Lake company, uh, my, my kids being in Utah, the fanness of Utah as a state and as a brand in the outdoor market, Black Diamond was a, an easy decision. And so I've been there the last five months. Um, as we continue to uh, be the dominant brand in climbing, backcountry skiing, and now into more mainstream outdoor. Um, so that's a little bit about my history. Uh, each of you will create your own history. Um, and I can promise you as you sit in the chair today, that history will not look like anything you could imagine it to be today. It just won't. Any more than this was what I imagined. Right? And sometimes you'll kick yourself, as, as I do when I'm driving with my wife, and say, wow. You know, it's funny, when, when I went to BYU, we lived in Murray, and we literally live in Holiday, how many miles? Two miles away from where we lived in an apartment 26 years ago when we first got married. Right? Life has no coincidences. If you think you have coincidences in your life, you need to look around and figure out the message you missed. Because there are no coincidences. So... As you start to think about your career and your opportunities, I want you to think about your education. And your education is not just what you learn in the classroom or in a book. It's everything you're anxiously engaged in that's of interest to you. Right? I want you to think of experiences because experiences will create the person you are. The more you're outgoing, the more you do unique things, it'll shape who you are, what catalysts drive your life, what becomes of interest to you, your passions, your interests. And that will change your life. And then the other side is be engaged. Be engaged. Always be anxiously engaged in a good cause in your own life. Seeking out something new for yourself that's unique to you. Right? You want to be successful in life, you have to be different and you have to be disruptive. Right? Can't be the same as everybody else. How many of you will leave this classroom today out of exi excitement and go to Baskin Robbins to buy a vanilla ice cream? Right? It's not vanilla that drives it. Maybe chocolate-covered <coughs> potato chips in an ice cream may be of interest to you. Right? So be d different and unique. Right? Be engaged in it. Uh, I never saw myself or planned to be an entrepreneur. So if you think that today you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneur is not something you plan on. It just comes with what you get engaged in. You will become different, and in doing di being different in how you approach your career, your job, your interests, you will become an entrepreneur and you're seeking to be different than the rest. Right? Just constantly look for what, what ways to succeed and create success. What's the definition of character? Very good. Very good. Definition of character is what you are when no one is looking. And yet, I will tell you right now, somebody is always looking.
You will be seen in your actions always. So watch. Be weary of that. People will watch to believe if your attitude, if your enthusiasm, if your persistence, if your character, if the things you truly believe in are for real. And if they are, they will magnet to them. They will support you to achieve your goals because they're honest and true. If they think they're not, and you're doing it for other than humble, other than righteous reasons in your life, people will move on. And most people do not find success by doing it all alone. Right? People do not seem to realize that their opinion of the world is a confirmation of their character. People do not realize that their opinion of the world is a confirmation of their character. If you're dogging on something, people hear that, it changes their perception and their energy from you. Patience. Success does not come at your first try or all at once. Be patient. Don't worry, it's not going to happen overnight, nor should it happen overnight. Getting your education, finding that perfect person, starting your business, achieving your goal, inventing penicillin, whatever. Be patient. Okay? It is common to rush to reach destinations we call success. Because that's all. We have all been trained to think about the destination. So we hurry to get, try and get there. Right? And we even talk, as my wife reminds me often, we even talk about it when we get there, when this gets done, when we graduate, when we, and the list goes on, and we constantly move that carrot out, out, out. Right? Success with a romantic partner usually may end in marriage. Success with a business may mean an IPO or an exit or some sort of sell of the business. Right? Uh, success is often measured by the destination. Yet the real value, however, in being patient and continuing to improve yourself while enjoying the journey. The success comes along the journey. Improving yourself is always worth the time, the patience, the investment. Right? Along the way, you will get your best experiences, not just at the point of the destination. Okay? You go back to what I said about no coincidences, the destination isn't the coincidences, it's the journey along, the people you meet into, the experiences you have that'll change your outcome. And you will find that the destination you thought you were going for doesn't matter to you anymore because the destination has now changed because of the value of the journey. Leadership. In my career, leadership has been the most important thing. I think I was 23 when I took over an organization, maybe 25 as the president of Doc Martens. I think the board, I don't think there was anybody on the board under 65. I'm not kidding. Um, and so leadership became my greatest tool. People weren't going to follow some kid they thought had no experience. So it was all about leadership. It was all about convincing others to catch your vision and selling the vision to them. Not my vision, the collective vision. The vision they wanted to have and succeed as well. Right? One characteristic common is willingness to conform unequivocally to the major anxiety of people in their time. You will always, in a leadership role, have people who work for you who are worried or stressed Right? How you do as a leader is 100% driven by how you make them feel about their contribution to the greater success. Leadership, like entrepreneurship, takes courage and the ability to remain comfortable in times of discomfort. How many of you get rattled when somebody around you starts getting rattled? Freaking out. Right? Versus just staying calm and collective through the whole process. Or optimistic through the whole process. The more you can cultivate being at ease during times of challenge, the greater your life and your leadership will be. And more people will be willing to trust and follow you. 
My greatest asset in my career has been that whenever I leave from one brand to another, if somebody has worked for me before, it takes one phone call to get them to come back again. Right? And they'll say to you, when asked, well, you're going to go do that again? They go, yeah, it's going to be crazy. Yep. It's going to be hard. Yep. It's going to take a lot of sacrifice. Yep. But I sure as heck don't want to miss it again. Right? Because I want to be part of that. I want to be part of the excitement. You have to create excitement around you in a leadership role that creates people wanting to work hard, run through walls, sacrifice, and help to be on that team. Right? They all want to ring. They all want to be part of that celebration at the Super Bowl, and they want a magnet to that. And you have to create optimism and control with that group all the time. Leadership will literally be your most important tool in any venture you start going on with vision. Inclusive of your own self. Because if you don't have leadership of your own self, if you can't stay calm when things are good or tough, right? if you can't create enthusiasm when you need it, who are you going to look to? And you just recognize the troubles, the problems, the frustrations, the same. Think of the heroes in your favorite movies, right? Jack Reacher's or whatever. That no matter what's going on, buildings are blowing up, cities are falling on them, right? Fights are going off. They're calm through the whole process. And that's why we associate with them. Right? It's the frantic one that they're trying to save that's going crazy, but they're totally calm, right? And in organizations, leaders are the heroes. They need them. They need strong leadership to follow them, to be that control, that strong point. One of the things you think about is your career as an individual. Think of each of yourselves as a brand. Okay? Now, there, in every company or brand, there are three things. There is the what. What do we make as a company or what do we do as a company? Right? So let's use McDonald's. What does McDonald's do? They make hamburgers, right? How many are familiar with In-N-Out? What's the difference between In-N-Out and McDonald's in your mind? <laughs> okay, so it's how they make it, right? It's different. They think it's how they make it is different than McDonald's. It's fresh, not frozen. It uses a different type of oil, right? We've all heard the pieces. So some brands are what? Some will graduate to how, and how they do it different than their competition. The best entrepreneurs, the best leaders, the best companies graduate to why. Why do you do it? Not what do you do, not how do you do it, but why do you do it? Because why not only is a point of differentiation, but it's a motivational piece. Right? And you get brands like, use the hamburger analogy, Five Guys. How many like Five Guys? Five Guys has taken the hamburger world by storm. And when you walk in there, you see all the positive press that they do. And their whole point is about the why. Why do they do what they do? Why do they pick local support? Why do they market the way they do? Why do they give back their funds to inner city markets? What? It's all about the why, no longer about the what or the how. And so those who'd be caught into it, they're not asking what's on the menu, and they're not asking how it's cooked. They've cho chosen to go there because of the why. Okay? Apple has become a why brand. When they started, they were a computer company. Then it went to phones or music, right? It could be cars. We only understand what they do from a why perspective. Right? If you drink coffee, you could buy coffee at 7-Eleven for probably 50 cents a cup. Right? You can buy it at Starbucks for six ninety five for some crazy Americano thing or something, right? So the coffee didn't go up by a tenfold cost. What went up was the why do you buy it at Starbucks versus 7-Eleven. They're both coffee. They're both deep roasted. They're both used water. Right? There's not a lot of difference. It comes down to the why. You have to determine what the why is in your life. Why are you picking to do something versus something else that will differentiate you? Not what are you doing, not how are you doing it, but why are you doing it? And if you can do that, going back to goals, 
Your goals will become easier because it's what motivates you. It's what you think about all day long because it is why you do it, not what you're doing. Determine today your why and use that map as your journey. Why, why, why? Why am I doing this, not what am I doing? Last one, and I think about it, is the secret of success. The universe will give back to you what you put out. That's very true. If you're ha happy and optimistic, you will magnet people around you who are happy and optimistic, and you'll be surprised. People say, my life stinks. And you go, hm, really? Everybody I know is happy. Everybody I hang around is happy. Because that's what you put out, and you magnet people like that. Right? Your, your secret to success is what you put out what you want to become, what you want to do, and the universe, I promise you, will align to help you achieve your goals. Got to have goals. Got to be enthusiastic about them. You got to be able to communicate them. Got to have passions and, passion and persistence and patience. But if you put out what you want out of life, it'll come back to you. That is the secret. There are no coincidences. If you put out negatives, you will get negative. But if you put out positives, you will get positives. And once you make a decision, stick with your decision and let the universe, people around you, those who care about you, support you, know you, those you lead, help you to achieve that success. And then finally and most importantly, if you want it bad enough, if you work hard enough, if you dedicate your 10,000 hours if you are persistent and passionate about it, communicate it, you will achieve your success. I promise you that. You will achieve your success. But most importantly at the end, be humble about it. Be really humble about your successes and people will help you to continue to be successful. Right? Recognize that along the way, others have helped you. And be willing to help others. Be willing that in your up opportunities that you will bring others along and they will find success and they will sell your vision and your story time and time again. Run through walls for you for your success. Help you to be happy and successful because you have helped them to do the same. It truly is pay it forward. It truly is. The more you do for others in helping them to be happy and successful in life, It'll come back to you. The universe is on. Remain humble. Nobody believes for a second that any individual in life did it all by himself. When we read the magazines, read the newspapers, and somebody tells about how they did it all, these big mega corporations, we all know. That guy showed up at work, he didn't do it. A team did it of people. Right? Or when, we, or when people say the brand did it. The brand didn't do it. The brand's never worked for itself in a day. People do it. Right? And so along the way, a lot of people will sacrifice to help you be successful. What you give back and your humility and your support to them will change that and continue it. So, any questions, thoughts, answers? What would you say is the why to Black Diamond? The why to Black Diamond is to be one with the sports they serve and to be absolutely indistinguishable from them. So if you think BD, you think climb. If you think climb, you think BD. If you think BD, you think backcountry skiing. And we, we act like that, right? We have 72 engineers in the company, and you'll meet guys like Brandon Perkins, who's his master's from MIT in engineering, but he's a 515B climber. And he'd say to me, there's one place in the world I want to work, only one place in the world I can work. And they do it for themselves. They never started as a company. They made products because it's what they wanted to do with their time, what they were passionate about. And because they put their lives on the lawn, they made it the best in the world. Made sure it was the best quality, the best innovative, and constantly were creating something new to move them and their sports forward. Did it one day happen to be a publicly traded company? If you walk through that building, you'd never know that. We have more dogs in that building than people. <laughs> People come and go on their own pieces, but they go home and they invent in their garage. And on Monday morning, somebody will walk in and say, hey, I tooled this up in my house over the weekend. What do you think? And you go, that's what you did with your Saturday? Well, my Saturday night, I didn't sleep. I had this vision, and I worked on this all night. Because I was thinking about whatever. 
That's, that's because it's, again, passion. It's what they're passionate about. Nobody goes to BD just looking for a job. They go to BD because they're passionate about what the brand makes, stands for, and says to the community. And then they become successful because they become part of it. Okay, any other questions? You know, um, twofold. You always want a point where you can be differentiated in your career, right, and be a little disruptive. The outdoor industry was that. You know, it was, uh, I don't think I'd met an MBA in the, in, in the outdoor industry. Probably maybe I'd met three or four in my whole career now. Um, and it wasn't there where people thought about. A lot of times the outdoor industry was started by hobbyists, you know, that enjoyed it for themselves and did it for themselves and then it just happened to become a business. Right, Chenard, Chenard was, Yvonne Chenard was, was a poor climber living out of a, out of a Toyota Tercel wagon making pitons. Right? And he finally went on a climbing trip to Scotland. And while he was there, he bought a rugby shirt. Right? Literally bought a rugby shirt. Came home to his wife and said, I love this rugby shirt. I think other people would like it. And she said, Yvonne, you're a nut. He says, he says, well, I ordered about 20 of them from Scotland. I'm going to sell them. This is true. Sold those rugby shirts. And she says, well, if you're going to sell rugby shirts, I bet somebody in L.A. can make you one. You don't have to get them from Scotland. So he started a company. He says, you know, where's my favorite place in the world? Patagonia. Well, I'm going to call them Patagonia. And she said, rugby shirts from Patagonia? He goes, I don't know. They don't have rugby in Patagonia. <laughs> All right? And he started making rugby shirts. And rugby shirts took off. And today he has an apparel company. All right? So uh, for me, it was, it was different. Uh, and then, yeah, you have to love the outdoors, right? You have to love what you do. Uh, whether you can spend all the time, and you know, that's the old myth of the outdoor industry. If you want to spend a lot of time in the outdoor industry, don't join the outdoor industry because of it. Become a park ranger or a guide or something, right? If you want to be in the ski, if you want to ski all the time, don't start, don't start a ski company, right? Um, but, you know, I think you're more successful in the things that you do because you love them. You know, and you find ways to be differentiated, be passionate, be driven in the things you love. What other questions do you guys have? Um, I do. I do. Uh, from skiing to mountain biking to running. Uh, I'm a passionate runner. Um, I try and spend as much time with my family as I possibly can. That's where I get my greatest joy. Um, you know, I, I make sure as, and as you get longer in your career, you get to control things. And so I can make sure I'm home on Sundays as often as I can. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, you have to be balanced in your life. Um, or you'll burn out on anything, even your favorite things, right? Even your favorite thing, if it's whatever, go and do it all day long, every day, eventually you're gonna get tired of it quick. We're looking for something else, so. Um, so you talked about leadership, and then I kinda got to think, with leaders you need followers, but what are those followers also want to be leaders? You have to develop them. Um, one of my greatest prides is that everywhere I leave, um, those individuals have had more and more opportunities. Sometimes me leaving creates more opportunities for them, but you have to develop leaders. You have to follow up behind you. Um, and, and you have to spend as much time on that, right? It's not just about the task, it's about the people. And when I was in MBA school and took HR classes, I thought that was the craziest class in the world. It's just like, oh, can we just get through this as fast as possible, right? Nobody really cares about the mushy stuff. Once you get into the business world, you quickly find out that the culture of a company says more about what it will achieve than what it makes. The culture of a company says more about what it will achieve than what it makes. There's a picture, and we talked about it a little bit this morning. There's a picture. How many of you have heard of Schwinn bicycles? Okay. In the late 70s, early 80s, they owned the market share by a lion's share. Right? And every, from high end to low end, Schwinn owned it. There's a picture of a board meeting in Boulder, Colorado of Schwinn cycles, and there were eight to ten guys sitting around in this corporate boardroom and they were all probably 250 to 300 pounds smoking cigars and drinking brandy. And all the picture says, the latest somebody put was the demise of Schwinn. Today Schwinn doesn't exist in the biking business. Right? Because those they woke up with a company that didn't have a culture of what they did anymore. Right? They didn't bike, they didn't care about biking. For them it was just an item, it was a what. And the best brands don't succeed at what. 
They have to figure out how to become a how and a why brand. And you have to develop leaders constantly. And you have to mentor.